Every 3v3 map has been increased in width by four tiles. Most of the maps are going to be played exactly the same way as they were before. But six of them are going to be played differently because of the changes that Supercell made. Additionally, the metas in Brawl Ball and Heist are very likely to shift as well because of the same changes that Supercell has made. It's time to talk about those map changes and how they're going to change Brawl Stars forever. Hello fellow brawlers, I'm Kairos Time and it is time to brawl and today we are going to be taking a look at the changes that Supercell has made to the maps in Brawl Stars with the recent update. Now I'm going to start by talking about the general changes from the maps and how they will impact things specifically for Brawl Ball and Heist, but then I'm actually going to cover six maps that have been changed in a specific way that will encourage a different meta or possibly even a different playstyle. Now what you're seeing in the background right there is all of the 32 3v3 maps before and after side by side so you can compare them. I'm not gonna cover all the details on every single one, but if you wanna take screenshots and look at them yourself, then you absolutely could. Also, some of the maps are actually changing. In Bounty, Star Gulch is now going to be called Crystal Clearing for it to actually match Crystal Cavern in Gem Grab. Cabbage Patch is going to be renamed to Death Cap Trap in order to match Death Cap Cave in Gem Grab, which used to be Mushroom Cave. Groundhog Burrow is going to be renamed Hideout. Terracotta Square is going to be renamed Stone Fort. There are no name changes in any of the Brawl Ball maps in Gem Grab Ancient Cavern is going to be renamed Chill Cave. Once again, Mushroom Cave is being renamed to Death Cap Cave. Deep Hollows is being renamed to Deep Siege. Bone Box to Stone Fort to match the Terracotta Square being renamed Stone Fort in Bounty. And Temple Catacombs is being renamed to Undermine. In Heist, Cactus Corral is going to be renamed Cactus Corridor. And in Showdown, Death Valley is being renamed to Rock Wall Brawl. By the way, there are actually zero changes that I could find in any of the Showdown maps other than this one single name change. Okay, let's go ahead and start off by talking about the two very big changes in Heist and Brawl Ball. And then we'll talk about the six maps that will start to be played a little bit differently because of the changes Supercell has made. First off, off Brawl Ball, the goal has been moved up two tiles and the respawn location has been set behind the goal. Now, why in the world would Supercell do this? Obviously, everybody's first thought is, wait, now you can kick a ball behind the goal and like turtle up a really solid defense if you just got one goal? Well, I understand the concern, but let me bring up another concern that Supercell has been facing, and that is the randomness of spawn positions. Previous to this update, when you respawned in Brawl Ball after the first time, like the first time you spawn in the middle of the map and then you're really close to the Brawl but at the Ball, but after that, you had a random chance of respawning either on the right side of the map or the left side of the map. My, my left and right are backwards when I'm recording, so it's confusing sometimes. And a lot of times in competitive matches, whether a team would win or lose came down to whether the enemy team respawned on the side that the ball was on or the opposite side that the ball was on. That has been the difference between making a goal so many times on competitive Brawl Ball matches, not only in the PBL, but also in Lex and I's competitive Brawl Ball tournament. Randomness was the deciding factor that determined a competitive team's success. Granted, the team's skill was the ultimate factor, but in a lot of situations, it was randomness that determined single matches. That is not competitive. So, what is Supercell's thought? Well, okay, we can't make it random. We have to make it so that it is um, constant, so it's the same every single time. How do we do that? Well, we can't have them respawn where they originally respawned at the beginning of the match, because if they do that, then they might just be in the middle of gameplay and be able to stop a team from actually making a goal. We also can't put them in front of the goal, because if we do that, then it's definitely going to give a competitive advantage to the defending team and make it way too hard for the team trying to make a goal to actually make that goal. So. What do you do in that situation where you have randomness defeating the competitiveness of Brawl Stars? The obvious answer is to move the goals forward a couple of tiles and have the team actually respawn behind the goal. That almost nearly completely removes the randomness and it also punishes you more for being killed in Brawl Ball, which increases the skill cap of the game. So it's actually interesting because I see a lot of the people that are actually complaining about this change are the competitive players who don't want the ball to be kicked behind the goal because that's a very strong defense. And I do completely understand why you'd say that. And that was my initial concern as well until I recognized that randomness was actually hurting the competitive meta of Brawl Ball. So now the goal is moved up a little bit closer to the map. It requires less distance now to actually score a goal, which means that offense 
has a new advantage. Not only because if you take out an enemy brawler, then they respawn behind the goal and it takes a longer time for them to actually like walk around to actually defend. So that gives you an additional offensive advantage, but also because the goals are closer. That makes defending much more difficult. But now it's easier for you to actually corner the ball further away from the goal or put it behind the goal so that the enemy team cannot get to it. So that is an increase to offense and an increase to defense. Personally, I think that it's too soon for us to decide whether this is balanced or not. I hope that Brawl Ball will actually feel very good, but I, I do have some worries, and I definitely did voice those concerns to Supercell, and they are aware of that, and they definitely have said, hey, we just want to try this out, take a look at it. Because, I mean, obviously, if they could get rid of randomness deciding competitive matches, that would be huge for the esports potential of Brawl Stars. But if doing that actually er encourages a much more defensive game that's a little bit more boring because people are turtling and throwing that ball behind the goal so many times, then they definitely are willing to reconsider things and see what their options are. Okay. Okay, let's talk about heist now now the safe used to be right next to the wall on heist in every single map now it is moved up on every single heist map anywhere from one tile on fancy fencing up to four tiles on safe zone now this does a few things that means that on almost every single heist map that wall breakers and throwers are going to have easier access to the safe and overall i think that this is a big buff to the offense side of heist especially for a brawler like colt who used to like be lacking like one or two tiles. He was always one or two tiles away from the safe when he was using his super to try and hit it. And now he should be able to actually hit it a lot more with his safe. So even though Cole did not get a range buff, which I wanted him to so he could become competitive in heist, now, I think he's going to be competitive in Heist, even though he got a damage buff instead. Additionally, before the walls are actually broken, if you do not have a thrower on your team, it is now more difficult for you to get to the safe. Because you not only have to walk around the wall, but then you also have to peer around and come to the safe that way. Additionally, they actually increase the competitive skill cap of Heist by removing the randomness of the spawn sites in Heist as well, either to the left or to the right. Now all the brawlers spawn right up against the wall in the middle of the map, which is actually pretty close to the safe. Because they spawn closer to the safe means that if there's like an enemy Daryl or an enemy Bull that's like right up on the safe, then you can respawn and quickly take them out, which is a defensive buff to Heist. So I actually think that Heist is going to be very balanced now. I think that the combination of the closer safes making it easier to actually get some damage on the safe along with the closer spawn sites making it easier to defend will make Heist feel a lot more exciting and a little bit more of like a, a tug of war type of a situation rather than a one-sided battle where you just push all together and then I'll go crazy on the safe. I'm really excited about this change right here. Okay, now it is time to talk about the six maps that Supercell has made changes to that are going to change the way that people play the map. Starting off with Undermine, previously known as Temple Catacombs. Now, as far as adding four tiles to the map, all they did is on each side, they just increased it by two tiles. And that's not that big of a difference, except that previously Ricochet was one of the strongest brawlers on this map, where you could just come in right here and basically be able to control this whole section right there. Where that distance is now two tiles wider, Ricochet's shots are going to be much less effective, and this map is actually going to encourage more brawlers similar to like Bull or Daryl or Heavy shotgunner type brawlers that typically struggle against brawlers like Ricochet or even Spike, especially because they have these much bigger bushes, which is four tiles wide that gives them plenty of space to try and dodge and hide. That's the first thing I wanted to pay attention to. The next thing that I wanted to pay attention to is right here. This used to be a very big choke point on this map. Basically, you'd have a Ricochet coming in, firing over on from the left side, you'd have a Spike firing in from the right side, and then you have a Jesse or a Penny firing up from the middle. I know you guys can't see where I'm pointing, but you get the idea. And that would result in basically you being stuck behind this wall. I mean, against competitive players, even if you were a competitive player, it was almost impossible to get out of it. But now they've actually increased the width of this space in the middle right here by two tiles on each side, which means that it's going to be much more difficult for like a ricochet to actually do something. This is going to allow much more freedom for the defending team to try and actually like come out. And it's going to be much more of a skill based type situation for you to actually successfully spawn trap an enemy team. This is a huge change and I'm really excited to see how it makes Undermine feel a little bit more 
fair. Up next, we have Flooded Mine. Now, the first thing that I wanted to mention is the fact that this bush right here in the middle is no longer here. This actually makes a big difference because previously one of the best brawlers for this map was going to be Pam because Pam would had just such a nice long wide spread that she was actually able to cover the whole area. Now where it's a lot more open, I think the Pam will still be decent because she'll be able to throw her turret behind either of these two walls, but she definitely won't be the obvious choice. You'll also notice these two mushrooms here, right? You know, surrounding right there. That Those two mushrooms actually make a big difference because all you have to do to try and avoid an enemy shot is to hide behind that mushroom. It gives you some actual cover rather than the bushes over here, which gave you kind of fake cover. The next thing I want to point out was the distance from the grass to the actual gem mine has actually been increased by one tile on both sides. That means that a gem carrier in the middle is much less prone to being ganked by an enemy brawler that is hiding in the bush. And of course, as you can see, part of the bush is actually now missing on each of the sides of the maps, which means that you're going to be able to see if like an enemy bull tries to come across to get into your side of things. This along with the last mention of the fact that you're less likely to get ganked by an enemy melee brawler means that this map is going to become much less of a tanky type brawler situation and is going to start actually favoring brawlers that are a little, have a little bit more control. Not that those tanky brawlers won't be an option, just that they won't be as dominating as they have been on this map. Up next we have Hard Rock Mine, and really the, the difference here is that they just increase the width of uh, this little long section right here, and that's not a very big deal. They did actually take that um, this one this one wall right there and replaced it with two of them, which is interesting, and I don't think that will actually make a very big impact. But there's one other really big difference on this map that they added. Normally, in this location, there's been nothing on Hard Rock Mine, but now there's actually this section right here. This means that you actually have two sections that will be favorable for brawlers to be able to hide behind and stuff. This is one of the reasons why brawlers like Barley and Dynamite have actually thrived on like Mushroom Cave. Sorry. Death Cap Cave. And I think that this map is now going to be able to be a little bit more favorable for throwers. I don't think that they'll like immediately come in and start dominating, but I do think that they will be a competitive option now. Next, we have Crystal Cavern. I did briefly touch on this map in a previous video, but there's just a couple of different things right here. First of all, this difference right here. The fact that you can actually go around the wall and there's actually a bush right there for you to do so is going to give brawlers that are a little bit tankier a, a very good advantage where they didn't actually have it beforehand. Next, we have Echo Chamber. And the biggest thing that I I wanted to mention here is the fact that on this map the choke point is three tiles wide whereas now the choke point is five tiles wide now why does this make a big difference the best gem carrier for this map has been piper when you do have a team that is actually like playing well and you can rely on your teammates piper was so good because you could just use this three tile wide choke point and almost guarantee a shot every single time if your aim was on point now where the choke point is actually a little bit wider, Piper's gonna have a little bit more difficult time landing those hits and it's gonna become more of a skill-based situation and there might be other options for brawlers like Jesse, Pam, maybe even Poco. Additionally, brawlers like Brock were really excellent coming up here on the left side because they could just fire off in those two different tiles right there and basically almost guarantee that they would hit a brawler or at least keep them pushed back. Like there's nothing you could do against a Brock that was firing up of rockets into that section right there. Now, if you actually look at this, there's an additional tile to the side, which means you do have a little bit more leeway to dodge his shots. It's not going to be a huge difference, but I do think the echo chamber is going to be a little bit less of a straight shooter map and become a little bit more of a balanced map. Next, we have safe zone, which had a massively huge overhaul, as you can see right here. Previously in safe zone, you just have a thrower that kind of comes in right here and they they had, you know, if they were really defensive, they'd come in this little safe area. And then if they were like mildly defensive, they'd move forward up into this little grassy section. And then if they were ready to start actually moving forward on the map to go on the offense, then they start moving in here. Now, if a thrower wants to actually be defensive, they have one place to do it from and that is right here around in the safe hiding in that bush. And in order for them to actually go from defense to offense, they have to walk all the way around and that takes time whereas before it was a very normal progression and it wasn't really that big of a deal the second big thing that I noticed for this map is that take a look at this here there's this wall and you cannot cross this wall which means that the entire match is limited to a choke point here and here 
unless you were like a dynamite that could actually jump over the walls or something like that. We still do have this point right here, this wall right there, and then there's this open access, but there's a second choke point over on the side that you can use to get into that middle area. These two big differences are going to be the difference between safe zone being very stalemate-y, like very slow, to something that's a little bit more exciting and engaging for the player to actually push up in. I evaluated all 32 of the 3v3 maps and the rest of the maps, including all the bounty ones and all the brawl ball ones, I think are mostly going to be played the same, but these six maps definitely will see some differences in them because of the map changes that were added. This is a very different video than I usually do, a very deep dive analysis of how the map changes will actually influence the meta of Brawl Stars. If you liked the video, please let me know what you thought about it in the comment section below. If you didn't like it, I guess you can give it the thumbs down. And if you really liked it, you should absolutely subscribe for more Brawl Stars content. I wanted to give a huge thank you to my YouTube and Patreon sponsors for helping support the channel in an extra special way. And for now, this is Kairos Time ticking by, and we will see you in Brawl Stars.